since it's late June here in Australia and we're really into winter now, I thought it would be a great time to show you guys some of my citrus trees. So let's start this tour right here. This is one of my lime trees and limes are just incredible to grow. Like they're great in cocktails, great in, you know, like margaritas, also great in cooking and in Mexican food and Asian food. And it is so handy because limes are so expensive. It's so good having a tree. And this tree is probably about, I'd say now it must be about seven years old. Um, it's a Tahitian lime and it is great. It, the past couple of years, it's been fruiting pretty well, but this year especially, it is covered. And it's a bit hard to see on camera and a lot have already fallen off, but it is covered in limes. And the longer they stay on here, and you can see some of them have started to turn yellow. Um, you want to pick them probably beforehand, but they do hang on for a good few months. About April, I've started picking these, but um, yeah, a lot have fallen off and they're starting to turn yellow, but they are still, there's still lots of green ones on there that are going well. Also, excuse the cockatoos, they're like everywhere at the moment and they're so noisy. They've got that really awful screeching sound, but they're pretty cool birds. All right, next on the tour, I have this massive grapefruit tree, and this tree is so big it's probably about three four meters tall easily um, I unfortunately do not like grapefruit and this is one of the original fruit trees from the property it's probably been here at least 20 years and they're all hidden under the canopy of the leaves but we get so many grapefruit and grapefruit to me has such a bitter almost peppery taste and I've tried many times to like them but I still do not the tree itself though produces these massive, this one's actually quite small in comparison for that tree, but they produce these massive fruit. Um, and this is a white um, flesh grapefruit tree, but you can get pink ones too. And I think pink ones are a bit sweeter and a bit nicer. So if I ever get another grapefruit tree, I would definitely go for a pink variety. Now this would be the fruit tree that I come to the most. It is my trusty lemon tree. And this lemon tree has always produced so many lemons for me. It has had quite a, a really quite a big prune uh, at the end of last season. So there aren't as many lemons, but they're all kind of up the tree. And this tree I found really kind of hung down low and a lot of the lemons have left to hang around the grass. And just pruning it has opened up all around the grassy area and the base of the tree, just letting more air flow in and just being able to, well, I can maintain the area around the tree better. But this tree is amazing. This tree fruits twice a year. So I get lots of fruit around winter, around now, then also more in late spring. And this is great in all sorts of um, kind of pastas and dinners even on. I, I love, you know, some good old smashed avo on toast for breakfast. So I love to put some lemon on that. Um, but yeah, it's fantastic having lemon tree. I actually have a couple of other smaller dwarf ones. They don't perform as well as this, but this has a, you know, this is probably about maybe six years old. So it's quite well in it. You can see it's grown very kind of leggy and quite quickly. It's been a bit hard to <laughs> brew into a good shape, but it's such a good tree. Now this tree is actually really hard to see just the, with the light coming in, but this little tree here is a lemonade tree and I've only had this for about a year, but I've been able to get two, this is the second piece, two fruit. And this tree is actually, um, I think it's reasonably common in Australia. I'm sure it's elsewhere in the world, but it's a cross between a lemon tree and a mandarin tree. So it looks like a lemon inside, but it's much sweeter. So you can actually eat this like you would eat an orange. Um, and it looks like a between a lemon and an orange, but it has that, it is crossed with a mandarin. You can't pull it apart like a mandarin, but it's really nice. I tried one yesterday. Um, I'm gonna say that I wanna keep, I think it needs to be more ripe, but it's still only a very young tree and it can take, actually there's another fruit here. <laughs> I didn't see that. That's not really though. Uh, but yeah, it needs some time to um, really mature and, you know, get a better taste. But it's quite a cool tree to try. I've been, you know, keen to try the fruit and it's nice. It's good. It has that nice lemony kick, but sweet kind of flavor as well from the Mandarin. All right, here we are at another one of my favorite fruit trees, one of my orange trees. And I have a lot of orange trees. So I have two very mature orange trees here, one here, one just behind it. And I have another about eight behind my house that are of good size but they're not as big as this one and these fruit trees here they produce so many like hundreds and hundreds of oranges each year and this year there's a quite a few on here you can see there's already quite a few falling off but i had last year like the most i've ever had and 
honestly, I was giving them away. They were all falling off. I was juicing them a lot. Um, and they honestly, like they kept on the tree until about March. So they start fruiting in June. They sweeten for the next few months, but they held on for almost, well, it was about nine months probably, they held on for, and they become very sweet. Um, and basically, I think because they were on for so long, because there were so many, I was unfortunately not, well, I didn't get as many this year. But as you can see, still more than I need, still a lot. But um, yeah, orange trees are just great. They love to juice them, especially in winter, uh, mix them with some green juice or something. Um, they're also just great to eat, you know, take them inside, eat them for breakfast, eat them as a sweet snack. They're <laughs> very tasty, easy to grow, just like most other citrus trees here. So this is one of my mandarin trees, and this tree as well is very old, and it's been here for, again, probably 20 years, maybe more. Uh, and these days, the mandarins are honestly pretty small. Uh, they're nice, they taste good, but this as well, this has been fruiting for the past couple of months, and I still have plenty of mandarins on here. Um, but I find, again, all around the base, there's little mandarins, the cockatoos and birds really like to get into these mandarins and eat them as with the other citrus trees. But I'll take you up to, I have another mandarin tree which is actually almost finished fruiting. There's not much left on it, but um, that was delicious. And some of the trees don't have seeds, so it's so easy just pulling a mandarin off the tree, eating it, and it's just one of those really nice, you know, fun things to do when you're walking around the property. So it turns out I was wrong, and now there's no fruit left on this tree. I have had quite a few fruit from here. Some have fallen off, but the rest the birds have got to. And this tree probably has been here, say about eight to 10 years. And behind me on this side is the rest of my orange trees. And they have been here a while. They are a reasonable size, but up here is very dry and hot in summer. And I find when it doesn't rain a lot, as much as I do, well, not so much now, but when they're younger, I try and water them, they don't produce quite as well and they don't grow as quickly. But, but this year the oranges really have quite a few fruit on there. So, I've only had a few from there yet, but they're nice. A lot of those oranges down there do not have seeds and they're very sweet. <laughs> so these trees, as you can see, really aren't that much taller than me. They do have quite a few, you know, fruit on them. So there's one mandarin and the rest of these six are oranges. Now, just quickly talking about what I do to look after these, you don't need to do a lot, but one thing that I really recommend is some form of like a pest oil or something just to keep like anthids and like little scaly bugs off the fruit because if bugs start getting on these they will eat all the fruit they will suck the sap out of the um, ends of the trees and basically you won't get fruit the trees will die like there's many kind of pests and diseases that these can get but it's very easily avoidable with just using some pest oil and you probably only need to do that about three times a year just coat the leaves um, and the thing is if you and kind of spray these trees before the fruit's on there, you won't have to spray them when there is fruit on there and you don't have to worry as much about, you know, using pesticides and consuming them. But um, yeah, if you keep on top of it, it's easy, but you know, if you just let those, these trees go, they can become a real nightmare and, you know, possibly die. And I have had a few that have died uh, in the past. And to be honest, there aren't many, you can buy eco oils and stuff, but there aren't many ways to avoid um, using some kind of pesticide on these trees. From my experience, if you've got any other experience, you can leave a comment and let me know what you think. Um, but besides that, fertilizing them a few times a year, especially when they're starting to flower and get into fruiting in spring, I like to give them some slow release fertilizer. And then also um, about halfway through summer, like when they're um, you know growing those fruit, I think that leads to tasty fruit, bigger fruit, less likely that the trees will get shocked and drop them. Because in hot days, these trees can just drop their fruit young uh, if they get a shock. And also, if they're not being fed enough, any of those reasons, they won't, you know, do, like, um, grow as much fruit. But I've got a few more other, like, little lime trees and lemon trees that I mentioned. And I actually have a blood orange, which is delicious, but it's only tiny. Uh, and it's not in a very good spot. So I'm thinking I'll get another one of those and have a bigger one. But either way, they, I live just north of Sydney, so they don't grow amazingly. They need that cold weather in winter. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with the fruit trees I have and let me know in the comments if you guys recommend any other fruit trees or what your favorite cit favorite citrus tree is. But yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.